pleased to say that we've got uh, another legendary shaker, Glenn Hurst, who's uh, kindly agreed to uh, join us. And I'll, I'll start off by saying, on behalf of all Berry supporters, Glenn, happy birthday for yesterday. Thank you, Maurice. It was uh, really good. Un un unusual, as in, you know, because usually we go out somewhere special. But you know what, on a, on a, on a different uh, note, because like, I've got my mother and father-in-law, they live with us as well, and Josh and it, 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 was, it was a brilliant day. And the, the, the one really good positive out of the lockdown is that you know, like, you know, you, you spend a lot more time with your family, you know, doing family things. And so it was, it was really, really good birthday. And I really enjoyed it. It was, you know, it's, it's just nice to, to have your loved ones around it. Yeah, that, well, that, that, that's great. All right. So um, we'll, we'll start at the beginning. So you're a Barnsley lad. We'll forgive you for being a Yorkie. <laughs> side, of, side of the Pennines. So at, le at least you've moved to the right side now. Uh, but you moved to South Africa when, when you were a youngster. Whereabouts in South Africa did you live? I lived in a place called Benoni. It's probably about 20 miles outside uh, outside Johannesburg. You know, my dad moved out. We emigrated out there when I was six. And my dad emigrated while well, we moved as a family for, like, with my dad because of his, his work. And we made our life there. I mean, it's a, it's a brilliant, brilliant country. Uh, a unique country in many, many ways. You know, with... Uh, you know, from Joburg with the high felt being high above altitude down to Cape Town, which is a lot more, you know, scenic, I would say, and a lot more, you know, British climate, I would say, to, to, to Durban, which is a subtropical climate. And it is it's an amazing, amazing country with brilliant, brilliant people. Yeah. Uh, well, one thing that, that maybe not a lot of Berry fans know is that you actually represented South Africa at under 23 levels. You, you got five caps, including playing in the first multiracial South African football team. How did that come about? That was, uh, we'd, uh, so like the, the country was coming out of apartheid and obviously Nelson Mandela wanted to create what, what was now referred to as a rainbow nation. And, uh, you know, school sports started to get integrated. So the year before we had, uh, you know, the first multiracial uh, under 16 South African tournament. So we had, uh, teams from all different provinces. I represented Eastern Transvaal, and I remember we got to the semi-final that year. It was actually Quinton Fortune who got the Player of the Year the week before, and he's obviously the, yeah. the career that Quinton's gone on and had has been been fabulous. And then the, I was one year below that, so I qualified for next the uh, next year, and I finished up I think the next season being the top scorer at the tournament. Eastern Transvaal, we won the all tournament, and I had to choose between. Uh, Tottenham offered me a two-year contract, and Bayern Munich offered me a two-year contract to go there. But I ended up, uh, I ended up going to Tottenham, and probably maybe in hindsight, I think uh, you know Bayern <laughs> Munich <laughs> might have been uh, might have been a good option. But I have no, I have no complaints, and and that's how it how it came about. And so I decided, you know, go back to to uh, go go come back to England, and I always wanted to. To, 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 to make it as a professional football player within the English league. That was very, very important to me. Yeah. So you, you, you had an apprenticeship at Spurs um, and then you moved uh, back up home to Barnsley. Yeah, And you, right. had, you had a spell there and then you went to Swansea City and, uh -huh. then, and then to Mansfield. And then you uh -huh. drifted into non-league with Wakefield and Emily. But uh -huh. it, it, it was it, from from there you you went to probably one of your most successful spells, which was at Air United. Yeah, the thing I, I think I, I think the a lot of people at the time because I think I could have when I went to Emily I could have signed for Leighton Orient I could have gone back to Mansfield with Steve Parkin because he wanted to sign two years, but I don't know. It was just something felt right about going to Emily at the time, and, and to be fair, it proved a masterstroke. You know, I learned so much in my time there with the brilliant manager under Ronnie Clavin. Probably, I would say, you know, the best manager I've ever played under. And uh, just playing man's football at a really good level, which is now the Conference North, just helped me grow in confidence. It helped me become go on to become the player, what I went on to become. And it, it was a brilliant move for me. A lot of people said, oh, why are you moving there? This, that, the other bit, but for me, it just it felt the right thing to do. So, when you moved up to Scotland, 
you, you had a, a, a brilliant uh, record. 49 goals in 78 games. That's better than one in two, which is yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> including five in one game against Morton in a 6-0 win. I think you got a couple of hat-tricks for them as well. So, yeah, how, they, how did you find Scottish football? Yeah, really good. I mean, I was really fortunate. We had we had a brilliant chairman at the time, Bill Barr, God rest his soul. He, he owned Barr Construction, so, you know, he, he was massive over Scotland and Europe. He had, he had basically had the contracts for all the roads and all kinds of, all kinds of stuff uh, in Scotland. He was a multimillionaire and... He actually he he funded the club really well, and the the squad what we had the first year and the squad what we had the third year was exceptionally good teams. I mean, it would have done it would have done really really well down in England. I mean, I remember I think in the in the three years we were there, I think we beat six or seven Scottish Premier League sides, but we beat them well as well. I think I remember Kilmarnock coming down to where, which is obviously a massive rivalry. They had Ali McCoy and you know a whole host of players. I think they were top of the prem, the Scottish Prem at the time, or just just below that. They were challenging the big two, and we beat them three three nil. I think it was at Somerset Park, and we absolutely battered them. So the it wasn't that we we regularly beat Premier League teams. We we were we were a well funded team as well, but we had a really really good squad. And end of the day, you're only as good as the players around you. Exactly. It was, to, to be fair, it was a it was it was a pleasure to play in the in Gordon's teams. It really, really was. And as, as a forward, I knew I was going onto the pitch, Maurice, knowing that I'm going to get some chances today, and when they come, I'm going to take them. Because it was really, it was just, it was just brilliant to play in Gordon's teams. I, I, I love play as a forward. It was brilliant. I mean, I had one of the best strike partners I've ever had, Andy Walker, the ex Celtic, uh, yeah. Sam Bolton, centre forward. He he was. He, 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 we just hit it off. He was an absolute brilliant back to goal uh, striker, in, such an intelligent player. But you know, more importantly, well, he, he was a really, really good person. And uh, I, don't, I don't know, he's one of the top three strikers where I've, I've ever played with. And it was just a pity that uh, he wasn't ever like two, three years younger. Uh, then I think that that his 48, 49 goals, whatever I scored, I think that would have been more closer to 60. Because that we only played together for the one season, but it, it was that good. I think I think we scored. It was myself, uh, Andy Walker, Gary Teal. I think we scored about seventy goals between the three of us. I think in one season. It's some, some going, some going. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was good. We we were we we were we were a good team, Maurice, and it was. But at the end of the day, we were match for anybody. I know we played Chesterfield that year, and I think Chesterfield won the League Two down here. I think they won it by about 20 points that year with Luke Beckett and, and Reeves here and all that. And we played them pre season and we beat them 7 1. Wow. And we, yeah, we absolutely. We, we, we would have been, put it this way, I think with that A United team, we would have been more than a match for any any team in England in, in League One and League Two. More more than a match. In fact, I'd go so far to say we we would have been in the top three with with, with that squad. With with uh, Gordon, he, he had good money to spend as well. Don't get me wrong, but he uh, he he spent it wisely. So when when you uh, finally left Somerset Park, um, you moved back down to Stockport for two hundred thousand, I think, and uh, you had a very short spell of uh, of time at Stockport. Is that right? Yeah, it was. I think what happened with that, Maurice, was that they paid 250 grand for us. And in fact, it was a choice between going to Stockport and going to Wigan. And Wigan were like, you know, starting to uh, you know, take shape, I think, under Bruce, Bruce Rioff at the time. They were in League One. Uh, they played much better football. I think what, what, what it was with, with Stockport, it was just the, the style that it suited us. I'd gone from like a, a very uh, free flow. Uh, possession-based team. Uh, what you know, we got it out into the wings. We attacked teams. We got balls into the box to to a team in the championship. What was set up basically to survive, playing a four-three-three uh, long ball team. You know, play for corners, set pieces. We had Sheffield up front, myself on the right, Aaron Wilbraham on the left, and Scott Taylor as well. But basically. I'd gone from you know getting myself into the box to be to be to be used as a runner kind of thing. Yeah. 
you know, the writer of the three on eight, eight big diagonals, and, and that that in, in in hindsight, I should have uh, it would have been better if I would have gone to Wigan without shadow of a doubt, because uh, their playing style suited me better. And I think the way they played, because like Tilly ended up going to 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 Wigan. And to be fair, I, I I should have been there with him. But the reason, like the, the short the short spell, it was twenty two games, I think, and, and four goals. The the playing style just didn't suit me. It's it's you know, I'd like to say I've gone from a footballing team into you know into a long ball oh. team, and, and that's how I wanted to play it. It just it just didn't suit me. It didn't it didn't suit my style. They they, they should have probably gone for they probably should have gone for somebody else. Yeah, well, you know, but that. That's it. It doesn't. There's, there's always reasons. I like to understand the reasons uh, as to to why things happen. But basically, it was it was just down to the playing style didn't 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 suit. Just wasn't you, yeah. It, yeah, and it wasn't, and and that was the the, the simple fact of the matter. Yeah. Uh, but you left Edgeley Park, uh, and then you went to Chesterfield, and then Notts County, and I think. Many Berry fans of a certain age will remember you scoring a hat trick at Gig Lane for Notts County. Yeah, um, right. so we've just about forgiven you for that. <laughs> uh, um, and then you went to um, that was in September two thousand and six, um, and then you went to Shrewsbury, and were reasonably successful at Shrewsbury, and then you you arrived at Gig Lane on loan. Yeah, so how, right. how how did that how did that move come about? Well, what, what happened is I'd, I'd moved from Knox County. I, I was top scorer there, and uh, I don't know, you know, Good John wanted to 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 do his thing. Good John Thorderson, and then he asked uh, if I'd be interested in going to to Shrewsbury. So I went to Shrewsbury. Uh, we were I think we were second bottom at the time, and bearing in mind, I think for the first. Two months, I think we were top of the table with Notts County. We were flying, doing really well. And then the manager started doing some ludicrous things for whatever reason. And uh, we were second bottom. We, we'd got right up to, I think we were playing Lincoln. And whoever won that game would have ended up in the playoffs. So we went on a really good run. Uh, we had a good good squad, a good team at uh, Shrewsbury. And I think it was just before our time, I, I did my Achilles. So my, 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 my right Achilles and... That was me out for for that all, all, all of the off season and then the start of until about November I got back. It was quite a long, long layoff. And when I when I came back, Gary Peters had just he just went cold on me for whatever reason that 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 was. A, end of the day, I worked really, really, really hard to rehabilitate myself, got myself into myself into really, really good condition. I was looking forward to to helping Shrewsbury get promoted to to, to League One. And then all of a sudden he sprung it on and he said that uh, Chris Casper would like me to uh, go on loan to Bury and would I be interested? And I said, you know, I'd, I'd, we had a good meeting, a productive meeting. And basically he was saying that, uh, you know, the opportunities would be very, very limited at uh, Shrewsbury and uh, he'd like me to go and be a regular at, uh, at Bury. So I, I took up the opportunity and... Uh, you know, I'm glad that I did. Right. So, um, you had a three-year spell at Bury between 2006 and 2009, um, and you you ended up playing more games for Bury than any other club. So, I, I, I take it from from a playing point of view that you enjoyed your your time at Gig Lane. Yeah, I did. I loved it. You know, really, really a club after my own heart. A really good community a club. Good people. And I like how I, I'm a big believer in whatever organisation, it's the people what make it. And, and the people at Berry are absolutely fabulous. You know, down to earth, community based, you know, love the club, you know, love supporting the club, get behind the players a thousand percent. As long as you give you the uh, give you give you of your best, they'll support you in everything you do. And I had a brilliant time. Uh, brilliant time. Very, very, very unlucky not to go up that third year. I mean, when when Shrewsbury beat us in the in the semi, my goodness me, how how we didn't win that by three four goals is is, is beyond me. Yeah, I, I, mean, remember, I remember it well. <laughs> it was we were the far better team over over the two legs, and basically they they'd scored a late equaliser, didn't they? And then 
obviously was it the penalties at end they, they, they were very they were very unfortunate and to be fair you know Chris had started building the squad and obviously Alan had like more funds at his disposal he brought good players in like Sod J and uh, Andy Morrell good good players to add to what was already a good squad and I thought that that squad itself was as as good a lead to squad as what you will find even you know even nowadays it was a really good squad so um the the players that you played with at, at, at Berry, um who did you who did you get on best with uh, i don't know I'd, you, you know what Morris, I, I get on with everybody i've got time for a lot of people uh, brian barry murphy i've got a lot of time for uh, colin woodthorpe a lot, a lot of time for dave dave chandler uh, andy bishop andy morell you know everybody i can't i can't turn around and say oh you know i liked him like above him or thing but you know just a lot of good good lads good 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 like good footballers more importantly you know good people we had a strong squad a strong bond uh got on well really with, with andy bishop i got on well with uh, chris casper really well i got on with chris brass really well alan i got on with, well with alan as well i don't you know from it wasn't just it was it was just a really good bunch of people trying to you know doing good things for berry football club you know, and I, I know I always uh, state it, but I just think, you know, good people build good things. I really, really do. And I think that's the strength of, of, of Berry Football Club is it's got really good people. There. Was there any, any player when you, when you first arrived at, at Gig Lane and you thought, wow, he's, he's a baller. He, he, he's, uh, he's outstanding. I, I, you, you know, the most underrated player and probably one of the best in the top three players for, for me, there's two of them what stand out. Paul Scott was one of them. Yeah, you know, yeah. He was great right back. Yeah, br- brilliant right back, brilliant centre half. You could play in centre midfield, seven out of ten. But Brian Barry Murphy for me. Yeah. You know, Brian Barry Murphy was an absolute brilliant footballer. You know, he great footballing brain, a gentleman away from the pitch, offered good advice and really could play. But not only that, I mean, on, on a different level, we had, and, and Chris Casper's got to take a lot of credit for this, the amount of young players that he brought through. So, you know, Dale Stevens, Nicky Adams, yeah. Dave, Dave Buchanan. We had uh, Casper Schmeichel played with, uh, for, for us for, uh, for the six months, I think, on loan. Uh, Elliot Bennett. You know, the, the, the amount of good, outstanding young talent what we had as well, that, that can't be underestimated as well. We really had good balance, and there was a lot of lot of good players. But the most underrated was was Brian Barry Murphy for certain for me. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm a, I'm a big uh, Murph fan myself. Um, I know I know Brian quite well from from his time. I was actually there the day that he signed in 2006, and we watched okay. we watched the uh, uh, reserve team uh, game down on Lower Gig when they played Morecambe and. Uh, the two of us were standing on the halfway line with Graham Barrow, and he was a good manager as well. Yeah, he was a very good manager. Yeah, um, but we 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 saw a goal by a young fella called Colin Kazim Richards, oh. who ended up as a World Cup semi finalist and is now yeah. at, at Derby County. And yeah. I mean, I, I've been watching Berry for fifty years, uh-huh. and we saw a goal, uh, Murph and I. And uh-huh. it's the best goal I've ever seen scored by anybody wearing a Berry shirt. Uh, the right. goalkeeper kicked the ball out, out of his hands on the edge of the area. It landed on our, our side of the centre line, in, inside the centre circle. Uh-huh. And Colin brought it down on his chest, onto his thigh, and volleyed it from inside his own half over the Morecambe keeper and into the back of the net. And I stood with Brian Barry Murphy and I looked at him and he said, who's that? And I said, He's, that's Colin Kazim Richards. And he went on to become this Coca-Cola kid. We got a quarter of a million for him from Brighton and Hove Albion. And he, the rest is history, as they say. But that yeah. goal, the, the pair of us just stood there, open-mouthed. Yeah. This goal yeah. that we've seen, because if, if Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo had scored it, They'd show yeah, yeah. it every day on telly. It was yeah. phenomenal. Brilliant, brilliant goal. That's another one off the production line. He, he was another one, wasn't he? You yeah. know, like you, when, you, when, when you look at Mary Football Club and the history of bringing young players through as well, 
they, they've, they've young players who've not only just gone and got careers, but they, they've got promotions after promotions behind the name. And I think like if, if the club comes out of the trouble, that definitely needs to be reinvigorated. It really, really does. Well, the, the last crop of youngsters that we had under um, Dave Fitzgerald and Mark Litherland, some of the players that have gone on, um, we have Jacob Bideau, who went to uh, Aston Villa, Oh, uh, and he's now playing at Scunthorpe. We had Will Ferry, who was on the bench for Southampton at Leicester the other night. Uh, yeah. we've, we've Aaron Skinner, who's at Tottenham. Saul Shotton at West Bromwich Albion. And honestly, the list goes on and on. Our youth, de- our youth development under those guys was just absolutely phenomenal in the last yeah. last few years. And we, we we reached the FA Youth Cup quarterfinals two years in a row. And that was the first time since the mid '60s that we'd got that far. And right. we were beating Premier Premier League sides uh, yeah. in, in order to get there. I think we, we lost to Liverpool in one, and I think we got beat by Birmingham in the other. Uh, yeah. But it was it was a, we had a phenomenal youth side. It really was yeah. superb. So, out of all the, all the goals that that you scored at Berry, uh, are there any that stick out in the mind? Uh, no, at the end of the day, every goal is a good goal. You know, I haven't got any particular favourites or, you know, one over the other, as long as it hit the back of the net. That'd do me. I yeah. don't care if it's from two yards, ten yards. They, 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 they're all, they, they all count, and as long as they were all helping the t- team, that was that's the most important thing. So, o- over your career, you must have played with some some top-class player. I mean, you, me- you, you mentioned Quentin Fortune earlier on. And, and Murph. So, who was the best player you played with in your career? Uh, the best player I play, ever played with, I played with a midfielder called Ian Banks at, at, at Emily when I was at Emily. And he was a centre midfielder and he, he used to be at Leicester, he used to play at, at Barnsley, he was a centre midfield player. I'll tell you what, by far and away, the best player I've ever played with. He was, he nearly got into the England. England squad, I think, when he was at Leicester. Honestly, Marie, he was unbelievable. You couldn't get the ball off him. I remember going to uh, when we went to West Ham in the third round of the FA Cup. When we, I think, West Ham had Frank Lampard, Joe Cole, they had all John Hartson. They, I think, they were third in the Premier League. They'd been unbeaten at home under Harry Redknapp for goodness knows, I think, about six months. I think it was, and he actually he was 37 years of age and he ran the game. And I've the thing he was like he. he he was just unbelievable, you know, controlling the game, his range of passing, his ability, his set piece delivery, his confidence, the way he was, he, he was just phenomenal. Mm. Like, and I've, I've never seen somebody control the game like that. He's just like, this is my stage. I'm going to show everybody what it's about. Mm. And he, he was, he was the best player I've ever played with. He was, he was phenomenal. I, I do, I do remember Ian, Ian Banks, for, especially from his time at Barnsley. I do, yeah, remem- I, I do remember him. Uh, yeah. And who was the who was the best player you played against? Best player I played. Well, there's 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 many of those, but the the toughest I would say was Ariane Desire when he was at Wigan, and I was at Big Chesterfield. Half. And, yeah, the centre half and. He was one of those centre halves. That he was like, you know, you turned, he was there. You think you got your shot off and your thing. And I was, I was at Barnsley with Harry, so I was fortunate enough to play with him and see firsthand how he trained as well. But he was just a phenomenal guy, a phenomenal in the centre half, really competitive, uh, really down to earth away away from the pitch. But you know, really, really good at what he did. And he went on and he had a superb career. And it, and it doesn't surprise me, but he was it was he was a tough one. He was, he was yeah. a very good centre half. Big, he was a big unit, wasn't he? Um, yeah, he was. He was yeah. So when when you left uh, Gig Lane, eventually you went uh, to Gainsborough, Trinity, and then Hyde, and then FC United before you you hung up your boots, yeah. uh, and then you you went into uh, doing a bit of management uh, yeah. at, at Marine. You were reserve, yeah. reserve team manager at Marine. Yeah, we got uh, we, we we started that from 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 scratch. Uh, I got asked three weeks before the season started, uh, would I like to uh, take it on? While well, we went through the interview process and uh, said, yeah, you know, got them promoted first season, built a really good attacking, young attacking uh, team. What was 
you know, plenty of potential to go on. We got, we got promoted. We got to a cup final. We did uh, did really well. And uh, in in hindsight, Maurice, I, I should have stayed there another year or two. You know, I should have stayed because I'd, I'd, we'd put the roots down. We had built ooh, a very, very good uh, young squad. What had the potential to 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 do great things. And in hindsight, I should have uh, stayed there for another year or two. And yeah, yeah, you mentioned earlier on uh, that you had a, a brief spell with Ashton Town, but obviously that's been been become sort of lost in the mist because of, of the uh, lockdown. Yeah, see, the the, the, the thing is, Maurice, and, and this is a God's honest truth, and I want people to know this, obviously, it was a great opportunity what uh, what, 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 what Mark and the people at Ashton presented, but the, the, the truth of the matter is that even after two weeks, I resigned after two weeks. You know, nobody knows that. We didn't put it out into the thing because there, there, there was things what had been going off in my son's life that uh, basically, you know, football had to become secondary. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's for the last 18 months, he's we, 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 we're at the end of the road now, more or less with it. He's been having all kinds of tests and, you know, uh, been under the hospital guidance for 18 months. And uh, we were eventually getting to, to the bottom of it. So from that, that point of view, that is that's the reason why I stepped aside, you know. And I did say to Mark, and I, and I can understand him being really, really angry at the time. But I just said you should have accepted my resignation after after two weeks because it, in my book, your family comes first. Yeah, did did disappointing because I, I I could have I could have done great things there because of the personal circumstances and what was happening. My family comes first. Absolutely. And, the day, yeah. and it's the the the, the God's honest truth is. I should have taken it. Uh, should have taken it on. Should have accepted that after after two weeks because I do want to go back into it and I, and I will. But end of the day, not until everything I know everything's yeah, right. We will, of course. You know, and and that's that's a simple fact of it. Really good club, really good people, forward thinking club. Uh, in fact, I was going to. I think uh, I think Terry, who I brought in, he actually took them to the top of the league with the squad. What what I'd put together, and to be fair. Uh, put put together on very little money as well, Maurice. You know, and uh, to be fair, like I think Terry did he Terry, Terry Smith who, who I brought in, Terry I think he drew one one two and they were top of the league. You know, so you know the the, the, the squad what we put together for very little money, didn't even spend nowhere near all the budget to be honest, was a was a very, very good good squad what in 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 my opinion, all it needed was two experienced players just to go alongside. Some, some really good players and that squad and Mark himself acknowledged that the squad was very good that squad would have finished in the top four with two experienced players So be, being at that level with Ashton Town were you keeping an eye out on the uh, results at Bury AFC? Yeah absolutely I, I spoke to I spoke to Andy about three weeks ago because he would have, I gave him the the rundown on Garstang before before AFC played them at Garstang, and I think he ended up beating them five one. Was it? Five one. Yeah, five one. To be fair, and he just wanted to he just wanted to know about their threats, how they set up, and to be fair, he rang us the next day. He goes, thanks, Glenn Light, for giving them the tip off <laughs> for, for, for their attacking threats. Because to be fair, they've got some they, they've got two or three really really handy attacking players, Garstang. But if you nullify them. They they will give up opportunities. We were we were very unfortunate. We lost uh, we lost two one to them. Their goalkeeper was man of the match. So that tells you everything you need to. Do. Yeah, but believe it or not, I think he was man of the match when even though we stuck five past them. Um, yeah. We were, we were quite fortunate in that game because we we got three penalties. Tom Greaves, who's our main striker, got a hat trick of penalties that night. He's on about fifty goals already, isn't he? Like? Yeah, he's 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 getting up there. <laughs> he, he knows where the back of the net is. Um, and he's he's a uh, he, he's one of those players. He, he reminds me very much of of Andy Bishop, uh, like a cross between Andy Bishop and Mark Carter, because oh, he, he, he's, he's a he's a he's a big lad, good in the air, better better in the air than than, than Mark Carter, but it, nice. on the same kind of level as as Bish, but uh-huh. uh, he he just knows where the goal is. He's a a bit like yourself. Uh, he, yeah. he's a poacher. You you, yeah, give, yeah. you give him an opportunity in, inside that penalty area, and you know where it's going to finish up. It's going to yeah. hit the back of the net, and he, he likes the sense of the dramatic as well. Because uh, a couple of times uh, when we've when we've played, 
uh, our first ever league game against Steeton. Um, uh-huh. We were 2 1 down going into injury time, yeah. and uh, Greavesy scored. Uh-huh. And then we got a corner, and the uh-huh. ball came in. Who was on the end of it? <laughs> I just knows where to be. He, like. he just knew exactly where it was going to be, and he just managed to get it over the line. And the place just erupted. It was, it was, it was phenomenal. Did I see that he's? Because I think he challenged it. His challenge was three hundred personal league goals, wasn't it? Something and like I know, that. Yeah. yeah, I think like Chris, Chris, Chris like Murray said, oh, "Hang on a minute, you need to be set there, make it four hundred Because I think, I think yeah. <laughs> if he gets to, to three hundred, he'll stop like he'll stop banging them in, like. Kind of yeah. thing. But that's good. Ed. If you get, if you're going to get, to be honest, Murray, if you're going to get promoted, you you need you need an out and out goal scorer in this division. You need somebody who's going to get you the thirty goal. And obviously, Andy in his wisdom and in his recruitment, he's he's done brilliant work there. Because he, he knows you need an experienced uh, striker. We had I brought one in at uh, uh, Ashton. Dave Moore. Dave Dave had six goals in. Dave had six goals in about four games. You know, but you you, you need them. You you need an experienced goal get at, at, at that level. And if you've yeah. got one, you, you you you've got a really good chance to to. to it's the, it's something. the it's the basis, isn't it? Goals win games. And so yeah, it, it, it's the basis. And we, we, we've got two, uh, two centre halves in uh, Tommy Lent and um, uh, Jimmy Moore, and also a young yeah. lad on loan from Stockport County called Jordan Downing. And the three okay. of them, um, Jordan's about nine foot eight. He's, <laughs> he's, only, he's only 17, but he's huge. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jonathan Hunt is, a, is another is a centre back, and, and he just. He's like a Rolls Royce at the back. He just yeah. glides across the pitch, yeah. and you wouldn't want to meet Jimmy Moore up a down <laughs> alley because he 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 will he'd run through a brick wall if somebody had yeah, the yeah. ball and he wanted it. He'd got he'd go yeah. through the, through the through a brick wall to get it. He, he, yeah. I've never I can't remember seeing a hard man centre half like that since the you know since the Norman Hunters of the seventies. He's that kind yeah, of yeah. player, and he's, he's not he's not he's not an old guy. He's just yeah, you know, yeah, you know, a, a phenomenal yeah, a, tackle. Yeah, so it's, I, I, I had one who I brought in. I think Junior DeSantis is with all the under twenty threes. He was my left hand side centre half. I tell you, I've, I've spoke to Andy about him. He should uh, he should go and have a look. He's, he's have really a look really good. athletic, six foot one. You know, wins. Battle scrap, bit ungainly like he looked at the time, but really you don't run past him. He competes. He's, he's, he's a really good, good, good defender. I spoke to Andy about him, but he, Andy did say that uh, he'd want to go watch him himself first, which is yeah, fair which enough. is fair enough. But he's a good, good, good player. So, so these these days, um, you're a teacher. Yeah. At Sacred Heart in Ormskirk. Um, no, Sacred Heart. Yeah. In, in Crosby. In, in Crosby. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. That's, that, my, my missus is from Crosby, so she'll know it. Uh-huh. How, how did you get it? How did you get into, into the teaching? Right. Well, it was just, uh, you know, obviously once I'd, once I'd left Berry, and then, then it was basically, you know, sit down and, uh, you know, talk to me, wife, everyone, you know, what would be a, a really, really good route to go down. And uh, the, 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 the route was, you know, I think I'll, I'll be teaching what, what were my interests. Obviously, I was starting to, for a few years before uh, I came to Bury, I started to forge an interest in, in in religion as well, and so I thought, yeah, you know, I'll do, I'll do, I did a key stage two, three, four degree. So basically, I did like two degrees in one. So I, I can teach at primary level and I can teach at secondary as well. But obviously, like with with primary school, it's a lot of modelling, where secondary is more about you know teaching your subject knowledge. So I just decided, you know, we we, we decided teaching. You know what? I'm very, very glad that I did, uh, Maurice. I really, really am. It's a, it's a very hard job. You know, uh, people shouldn't say that uh, you know teaching is easy because it's not. It's, it's, it's a really, really tough job, but it's a brilliant job. And I've been, I've been very, very fortunate, lucky, or blessed, or whichever which way you want to put it. That uh, you know, I've, I've landed on my, my feet at a, a school where you know it's obviously you know very community based and community led but the most important thing and the best aspect about Sacred Heart is the 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 teachers what work there 
you know, they're all very close and very friendly. And the best thing I can say, they're, they're, they're excellent people. Yeah. You know, and they're, and they're, 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 Crosby as a community are, are very, very fortunate that you've got such, you know, well-intentioned, committed uh, people and teachers at Sacred Heart who just want the best for their sons and daughters. You know, they really, yeah. really are. Are, are blessed to, to have that never mind you know Ofsted and this and what people say well, they they have got amazing people at the at, uh, at Sacred Heart and amazing teachers and that is the heart of who the school is and you know what it's a, it's a pleasure I, I enjoy it I, I really I've enjoyed these seven years it's been hard work I had a wonderful head of departments who who uh, retired at the end of uh, last year but he, he taught me so much and uh, I'm not just thankful about it. I would say I was being in the right place at the right time, being there. I do, I do, I do enjoy that. Good, really good people. Mm. And teaching, I'd say I'd encourage it, but it is it's hard work. It's not it's not yeah. like the papers. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not, all, not all holidays and fin- finishing at three no, o'clock, is it? No. no, absolutely not. It's yeah. uh, it's it, it's the it's the real world, and you you, you see. You see, you know, lots of things and, you know, you can, you view life, put, put it this way, I, I view life and people completely differently now, having spent seven years in teaching and the, the amazing things that that people do and the, well, the amazing stories that, you know, many, you know, pupils can say, say about their own lives, it, that, that inspires me if you, if you just want to, you know, if you can help change or mould one life then. You know, you, yeah, you, you've done a good, thing. a good job. Um, what 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 mm-hmm. do the, what do the kids think of Sir being a, a an ex professional footballer? Yeah, they do. They they do think. Ah, oh, sir, you've got your own Wikipedia page. You've got you, you've got this. Oh, sir, I, I, I saw the video. I said, no, that's 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 my brother Stan. <laughs> 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 they, they do know. They 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 they've really taken to us. You know, I can I can honestly say I've. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy all the classes I've teach. You know, whether past and present, it's it, it's good now that I've been there seven years. So, for instance, you know, when if, if for instance I started teaching them seven years ago in year ten, a lot of uh, there's quite a few of them now who've actually studied and they become teachers themselves, and they keep in touch and they get back in touch with you, and you know they tell you about you know their teaching now, and you know they're starting on the first and second year. So to see that development and see see the, their own journeys and to see them grow, grow up into young adults and, you know, starting their own families, having their own careers. It, it's magnificent. I, I do love it. I, I really, really, I love that aspect of it. And if uh, I know over Christmas, from out of the blue, one of my ex-pupils, I think it's about 23 now, he just said, so uh, we're just looking back and in hindsight, and I think he's the only one who's ever said it, he said, in hindsight, so you were the best teacher I've ever had. <laughs> so, uh, you can't get a better compliment than that, can you? No, you can't. If one person says that, well, you've, you've I've, changed I've, the life. I've, yeah, I've I've done a good thing, and it's it, it, it's nice to be appreciated. Yeah. It really, really is. Well, Glenn, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thanks for everything uh, that you did in your time at, at, at Berry. We look forward to seeing you down at the Newfound Stadium or, fingers crossed, back at Gig Lane uh, in the very near future. So please come and say hello to us. There's a pint waiting for you. Uh, okay, bring, 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 bring Yvonne and your, and, and your son as well, and we'll, we'll make sure that they, they get well looked after. Glenn Hurst, thanks oh. very much. Cheers, Maurice. Thank you.